it's been a week. I I say that every week, but the last like week and a half has just been oh. Um, but I'm wearing my Milkstein shirt today, and I have my Milkstein today. Look, they match. It's, it's amazing. That's the power. It is very Kitterino of me. That's the that's the magic of the internet or whatever. Something. Something. I don't know. Um, it has been a week and it is only Wednesday. Hello, fellow bear Jonas. Welcome in. Um, it's group therapy night. So, yeah, let's, uh, let's talk about stuff. I don't know how this is going to go. This is the first time I've ever done anything remotely like this. We're going to try it out and see how it goes. If it works out, great. If not, no big deal. Uh, we might move it to a different night because I know other nights are more convenient for people. Um, I had a couple of people that wanted to join that um, they couldn't because Wednesdays are other things for them. Uh, so we'll, you know, as we like to say at work, we'll iterate on it. Um, so we'll we'll get there. It'll be fine. Uh, but this will this will be an interesting experiment to see how this goes. Um, before I forget, don't forget Friday. We do not have a Friday night happy hour stream this Friday. Taking a night off and taking uh, most of the weekend to just kind of chill out. Um, should be back on Sunday night, but if it changes, I will let everybody know in both the Discord and on Twitter. Um, but should be back Sunday night for Sunday shenanigans. Um, and I've been busy. I have a small surprise for the uh, for the crew, which I'm sure they will eventually see before I show them. But you know, we'll we'll get there when we get there. Um, but other than that, uh, let's try this thing and see how it goes. <sighs> yeah, like uh, like Jonah said, it has been a week and it's only Wednesday. Um. So last week I did my um, I did my therapy stream, which was I think a like a really big hit. Like I think a lot of people were interested in it. We got some really great conversation out of it. Um, so I'm gonna continue doing those. I think. Um, and we had a few people sort of express that they wanted to that they'd be interested in like doing a group therapy night maybe once a month or whatever. Uh, so I figured, you know, let's give this a shot and see how it goes. So, um, last week was who boy. Um, I kind of had a rough time wrapping my head around a bunch of work stuff last week. Um, I don't know. It's, it's, it's one of those things where you kind of get into, a, a like a, I don't want to say like writer's block, but it's kind of like writer's block, but for coding where you just can't get your head around stuff. Um, just stuff isn't working right. Stuff isn't, um, is not just coming together in your head? Um, the thing that I was working on for work last week, I just like every little tiny piece of it just seemed like a huge, like just pile of crap that I had to get through and I couldn't, um, Thankfully, everything came together on Monday of this week, which was really good, um, and also um, very timely because Monday was the last day of our sprint at work because we go from like Wednesday to Tuesday in two week chunks. So that was that was good that we actually got everything in by the deadline. But in the words of Marty McFly, why do we got to cut these things so damn close? I don't like doing that. I like being done and. I would much rather have a day to sit on my hands and do nothing than a day where I'm crunching to get things done by the deadline. Don't like the crunch. Not at all. Um, I did do my taxes today. So, you know, adulting or whatever. Great. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like, I feel like Shrek when he get like at the end of the first movie, when he walks into the church, he's like, he's like, love Duloc, first of all, very clean. He's just like, eh. yeah, so... Finally finished my taxes today, getting a small refund, which, you know, 
A small refund is always a big win to me. That means I did it. I played it close without. I I I got the nearest re, nearest to the retail value without going over. So by prices right rules, that means I won. I won taxes. Um, <laughs> you won new taxes next year. <laughs> new taxes next year. Yeah, right. Uh, it's like it's like Cleveland said once on this on on Family Guy. He's like, you don't really win. You just do a little better each time. Um, but yeah, so yeah, uh, this week I've got I'm taking Friday off from work. Um, so Lollipop will have no one to bug him during the day. Um, and then we've got um, I'm going. Uh, camping this weekend, um, so, you know, I'll just be in a camper, just away from, I don't know, I mean, I'm away from people now, but I'll be away from people in a different way, I guess, um, Friday and Saturday, so, that'll be a thing, um, God, I hope the mosquitoes aren't bad, I hate, fucking mosquitoes love to eat me up, Jesus Christ. I'm like a goddamn buffet plate for them. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is, but Jesus, the mosquitoes love to eat me. Um, one fourth of July, we watched the fireworks um, near the top of Tampa Bay because that's where we live. And so there was a fireworks show like at the actual physical top of the bay. Um, and um, we, we sat out and we got... Um, like Sabrina got a few bites... But, like, I got in the car and I was just, like, welted all over. Because, like, they just, I don't know what it is. Maybe it's my blood type. It, I mean, like, like, I understand that that's very much a thing. That they, they can, they can like, seek out and smell different blood types. I mean, they're, you know, they're, they're, they're blood-sucking entities. That's what they do. That's what they feed off of. So that wouldn't surprise me at all. Um, mosquitoes are... Mosquitoes aren't bad in the cooler months. They're really not bad until like you get to to March, and then into the summer. Um, through about I guess what about September October, and then they they kind of die out again. Um, they kind of hibernate or whatever the hell mosquitoes do, um, and then they're fine for a while. So like you know prior to the last couple of weeks when spring started and the trees are jizzing everywhere and and shitting on everybody's cars um you know they're fine there's like there's no mosquitoes out um the gnats the gnats are out a lot more than the mosquitoes are but you don't you know you don't have to worry about the gnats so much you just like don't walk through the little cloud swarms of them because they do they swarm and they'll just be in like these little like floaty clouds so you just kind of like gotta maneuver around them and you're fine um, so it's not too bad. Uh, what else is going on? Um, my next, when is my next therapy session? I want to say it's the, um, two weeks from yesterday. Where's my calendar? Don't I have a calendar? I do have a calendar. I don't know how it works though. <clears throat> That's how days work. It is how days work. Oh, maybe I didn't put it on my calendar yet. Um, where's my email? I right, see. So yeah, I got. I don't remember where the hell it is. Da, da, da email. Beware the midges. Is that what they call gnats in Scotland? Is midges? Is that is that a thing? Also, I really want to go to Scotland. Jesus Christ, it's so fucking lush and marshy and shit. Ugh. Where's my new one? Appointment scheduled. Appointment scheduled. Da, da, da. Tuesday, March 30th. So, yeah. Yeah, so two weeks from yesterday. Uh, same time, 4.45 like it was the last time, which is good. That'll be uh, that'll good. Strongly revile midges. Okay, I got to see what this is about. Let's see what the midges are about. A midge is any small fly, including species of several families of non-mosquito. Midges are practically every land area outside of. Let's see. 
Nope. What's a gnat? Uh. Oh, okay. Okay, so, yeah. So, Midge is, like, yep, 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 yep. So Nats and Midges are in basically like the same suborder, apparently. So very, very similar. Ugh, yeah, nope. They're nope, 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 nope. Nats aren't as bad because they're like here, they're really just tiny, tiny. That's why you just see the clouds of them, but mosquitoes. Ugh. The fucking mosquitoes, man, just Woof. Let's see if I can get some... Let's see if I can find some chill music again. Where is the audio library? Um, YouTube Studio has a good audio library. Free music. We're going to do it again by... Mood. Um, calm. Ambient, ambient calm. We're gonna do that ambient calm music, like, like Jonas was talking about last week. Let's see. If, one to thirty of many. Oh. Okay. Let's see. Um. Oh, what is this? Oh, well, that's nice. What do y'all think of that? You like that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's... That's nice and chill. Okay, that's good. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, <laughs> that's what... Okay, so... I am, like, I'm... I'm I hate ants. I hate ants. Um, insects in general, I'm fine with. Ants, just... Get them the fuck away from me, um, and that's that's my thing about ants. Is like, like you know, a lot there's a lot of the common things that people are afraid of, like snakes. Snakes don't really bother me that much. I have a healthy respect for all of these creatures, but like snakes don't really scare me. But usually, you only have one snake. Um, case in point, uh, the walkway up to our front door used to be like this jungle of shit from the previous owners who planted all of this and never really maintained it so i eventually took it up and found there was a snake living there who ran away which is fine and there's like a there's a retention pond behind our house with a bunch of like trees and shit over on the other bank so plenty of places for the snake to live it's fine um but there's usually just one snake you have to deal with spiders unless you're in australia disclaimer because fuck me but spiders usually same thing you know like, you have a spider or two living around, and they'll do their thing, and then they're 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 done. When you deal with an ant, you deal with not just him, but three trillion of his best friends who are ready and just waiting to fuck your world up. And I hate them. I hate ants. Like, ugh. ugh. So bad. Okay. Oh, bees? Oh, yeah, see? that Now, Elena, do you have an allergic reaction to bee stings? Or is this just like a, a fear that you have of them? Just like just like you, you don't want to go near them? Thankfully, no. Okay. No, no allergies. I am just um, fairly terrified of them because my first real encounter with bees was when I was like eight or nine or something. And I was playing behind my uncle's barn in a pile of car parts because... Mm. That's what you do out in the country. Yep. And uh, apparently the type that can double sting had made their uh, nest in this pile of car parts and did not take well to um, eight or nine year old me just rambunctiously fucking around on it. Ooh. And so I angered a pile of them. Thankfully, somehow only got stung like four times or something. Yeah. But ran to 
adults, because, ow, and they were trying to pull his tractor into the barn, so none of them could hear me, and they were all just, like, trying to just basically tell me to fuck off for a bit, because he was, like, trying to back it into narrow doors. Yikes. And I'm just, like, yelling about bees. <laughs> oh. So, I'm not... I'm not particularly a fan of bees, um, and by not particularly a fan, I mean I I go into freeze mode if I notice them. Yeah. So, yeah, that's... no. Because to me, it's like, okay, you say there's a bazillion ants. Yeah, bees do the same, well, not quite as many, but bees do the same thing, and they hurt. They do. You're absolutely right. <laughs> yep, yep. Now, I, 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 know it's not, I know it's not as bad as it can be with bee stings. Um, but growing up in the south where I did, we had fire ants. And Fair. Um, fire ants are angry as fuck. And, I, you know, I, I know not... Lollipop told you of his adventures? No. Of his feet practically doubling in size? Oh, Jesus, no. Oh, Lollip right, yeah, I didn't I didn't work with you when that happened. No. That's right. You were, were still working at the other place. Yeah, that's right, because... Uh, yeah, I ended up... The, the reason why we have someone do our lawn for us is because it is way cheaper to pay someone to do our lawn than it is for me to go to the ER every time I do our lawn. Mm -mm, absolutely <laughs> fucking not. Nope. That's part of the reason got, why I don't want to do it, because I don't want to deal with the ants. He got I've, fire ants bit on his feet to the point that they were almost twice his normal feet size. I, I, believe I couldn't walk. I couldn't walk on one of my feet. I believe. And I was like, I I showed my brother, and that's when he was like, oh yeah, so like one of the only allergies I have is fire ants, and I was like, oh, wonderful. So if you, that is the, if that's an allergy you have, I almost Gen definitely have. Genetically, it. yeah, you probably Thanks. have it. Yeah, I'm, fire the, I'm ants. the one that's allergic to everything. Yeah, right, so, exactly. Yes, your fear down here makes way more sense to me. I grew up in the land of North where your ants were either carpenter ants, which were just big. They're and big, but like and they, well. they'll bite you, but they're like, they're doing their thing. They're just, they're, they don't they're care. They're doing their thing. Or the little tiny ones. Like, yeah, you could get the little tiny red ones, but most of the time it was the little tiny black ones. And I enjoyed smashing their nests because it was weird little piles and I liked playing in what I thought was sand. Sure, sure. Because I was a weird kid at like four. Yeah. So those aren't, so, you know, I think if those were the ants you grew up with, you probably wouldn't hate them as much, but fire ants, yep. Um, yeah. yeah. Fire ants are basically just uh, wingless bees as far as I'm concerned. Pretty much. I mean, because they have, they have venomous stings bites just like, you know, bees do with their stingers. And yeah. they're, oh yeah, God, no, they're so, ants. they're so fucking mean. Like, and that's yeah, the thing, like, bees bees at least like they're highly defensive but they're not looking to pick a fight fire ants are always looking to pick a fucking fight they're so fucking mean yellow jackets yeah, and except, hornets oh go yeah, ahead except i was gonna say except for hornets yeah because you say bees are are mostly not looking to pick a fight until you get into like the wasps and hornet territory but see okay see here's the thing here's the thing it's like it's like the graphic where it's like bees like cute um like chunky little butts, uh, pollinate flowers, make honey. Wasps, yellow jackets, hornets are assholes. That's it. That's literally all they are. They're just assholes. Like wasps, hornets, yellow jackets, like that that entire fucking thing, like that entire just group. They're just the worst. So, um our um where all of our like telecom and power come into the house is along this front walkway because we're a townhome and we're a middle a middle unit. So our walkway up to the front door goes past our garage. Um, so that's where all of our telecom stuff comes in. And every once in a great while, I have to go out into the box where all the coax cable meets and splits off. Um, so for example, when I moved everything, uh, all of the telecom stuff in the house up into the office, I had to rewire um, the splitters so that the signal coming from the ISP, which we have as Frontier, um, so that signal would come into um, the the cable drop in here instead of the one down in the living room. And I opened that bad boy up, and no shit like this fucking big, a big ass what my uncle Bob used to call dirt daubers, but a big ass dirt dauber nest in there, like a big ass fucking wasp nest where they've 
they've gone in there and like, oh. Nope, 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 yep. nope, nope. So nope. I had to take care of that, which was fun. Nope. But I keep a can of Raid, like the, the Raid Wasp and Hornet spray on hand for exactly that reason. Um, f fuck Frontier, but also, you know, hey, hey, Fritz is here. Hey, Fritz. None of the other none of the other options are all that much better. No, like the the only real options here are Frontier and Spectrum. That's it. Those are our options. Um, I could get DSL probably, but that still would be through Frontier. So I have either. Well, I guess I could get WoW, but WoW is garbage. Spectrum is literal dumpster on fire garbage. And then there's Frontier. Yeah, having too many issues. Yeah. Well, I was. I was having issues with That's Spectrum. Fair. Um, That's fair. I mean... And then they jacked fair. my price by like 15 bucks after the first year, and I told them to go fuck yep. themselves. I will switch back to Frontier to get even cheaper internet. And now that legislation has been enacted to where they can't charge me for renting equipment that I don't use, I no longer have their equipment that I don't use, and I don't pay that fucking, like... Eight dollars or whatever a month it is. So, haha, -ha, fuck them. I'm paying yeah. like forty bucks for, well, like five hundred, five hundred. It's pretty great, honestly. Chris, do we have access to Frontier? Uh, Frontier was always crap here. Yeah, Frontier yeah. in in y'all's area is like the the infrastructure is older over there. It's not great because I my first place was not We're terribly like two far. Two blocks away, not really, we but like. The that doesn't mean anything. That, um, <laughs> we don't we don't get access to fiber, and they won't guarantee us more than like ten meg down. Yeah. Yep. Yep. See, and that's okay. the thing. Like, that's why I was saying I could get DSL. So the DSL service is available there, but that neighborhood that y'all are in is older, so they don't. It's mm -hmm. not wired up for fiber. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Thankfully, this neighborhood is, and this is this is you know. An area where there is a lot of fiber because oddly there's like like a block that way is a bunch of industrial business stuff um so my old office that i when i worked for the construction company like i, I could walk to that office from my house um but uh the um we had fiber in there and it was like damn good fiber too and cheap um but I mean that was business fiber. fiber. Yeah, Frontier is Frontier is more highly regional than most carriers, um, and part of the reason for that is because Frontier had a couple of regions, and then when Verizon sold off their FiOS business, Frontier bought it up, and that was regional as well. Um, the only places left that that Verizon really still holds onto their FiOS service is in the Northeast, which is their big area anyway. Um, but like all the little areas that they had it elsewhere, they sold it off to Frontier. So Frontier started off with a couple of areas and then they got a couple of more areas based on that and like another couple of little acquisitions here and there. And now they're bankrupt. So, you know, whatever. But my internet still works and I only pay 40 bucks a month for it and that's all I give a fuck about. So... Fritz, how are you doing tonight? You doing all right, bud? Just we're just kind of hanging out, doing you know our group therapy thing, just uh, bitching about life and internet service providers and angry invasive insects that we've all had traumatic experiences with. Hey, you know sometimes just complaining about things is a therapy in and of itself. It really is. Sometimes you just gotta fucking bitch about something because you feel better afterwards. And it's, that's, you know, sometimes, sometimes. Sometimes misery loves company. Also, yes. Also, yes. Oh. Man, this, this music is really nice. I like this a lot. This is super chill. Oh, just wrapped up your work day. Nice. Nice. So, yeah, I mean, that makes about, that makes sense being over on West Coast time. About f it's right at five o'clock over there, so yeah, I can dig that. And yeah, we were talking about work earlier and how I was having a fucking time last week at work, and I just didn't, I did not get the stuff done that I had wanted to get accomplished last week, and it was, 
not a great work week. And then like Saturday, Saturday, like I slept in a little bit, but like I was just drained. Like I was just exhausted. I didn't even want to, like I could barely get off the couch. I was just so just bleh. I think it was just because like my, you know, um, just my, my, my brain just fried. Oh, say hi to your wonderful wife for me. Tell her we love her and, and we we miss y'all. Um, we gotta we gotta do something together soon. We gotta we gotta figure out a game night for the for us. Um, but thanks for stopping by, bud. It's always good to see you. Um, yeah. So Saturday, Saturday, I was just like I was wiped the fuck out. Like I. I almost fell asleep on the couch, like in my recliner spot. Like I was just, I mean, I have a lazy boy, so, you know, it's, it's conducive to falling asleep in, but man, just, ugh. Um, and then let's see Sunday. Oh, Sunday, Sabrina got her, her vaccine. So, and she got the one shot. So I'm, I'm very, very happy for her. She works in education, so she was eligible to get one in Florida. Um, so we went ahead and got that for her so she could go ahead and get it. Um, so very, very, very happy about that. Um, um, thinking about trying to see if I can get a letter of some kind. But I have to have a physician to do that. Um, might do the MD Live and see if I can do it that way. You know, don't know. Might not work, but... I guess it doesn't hurt to ask. Um, doesn't hurt to ask. Nope. Nope. So. Uh, so you are, I, I know that you, you know, you alternate in and out. So you're in the office this week, aren't you, Elena? Yep. I'm in the office this week. Uh, sorry. Eh, it's been better than some weeks it just comes with its own host of drama because um they're kind of there's just always the petty politics going on and they're being the the soups amongst themselves are being petty about people keeping things in their work basket and i get dragged in the middle of that because i will do it for the right reasons and on cases that literally only I work on on my weekend mm -hmm. and like people who grab stuff that anyone could work on and then keep it for a day or two like I get that that's not a good thing but I am literally the only one with the skill set in our group of eight and I'm the only one in a, who wants the skill set in our group of eight so don't know what to tell people like and my soup's totally on board she's just like I, you, you've talked about it with me. You keep me updated on your stuff. She's like, I'm completely fine with it. But they have apparently now automated a report where they're like, so-and-so has X things in their basket and so-and-so has X things in their basket. And I'm just like, this is awesome. Like, for some people, it probably need, they need the reminder. But, like, this, this is mostly just all dumb. Like, this is just all a waste of time and stop making my job harder. Well, and, you know, it would be different if... Other people were able and or willing to do these jobs. Um, and also, it would be a lot different if you weren't, you know, plowing through these these things and getting them done. But neither of those is the case. So what other alternative do you have? I mean, I can I have already developed as soon as she started bringing this up. I already know exactly how I can do it and just not have them in my basket and I'm just going to basically be working on stuff and no one's going to know it until I get it done. <laughs> we but don't do that dumb. at all. <clears throat> but that's dumb and stupid and I, I'm going to hate it and that will, if that actually gets pushed into play, like I know it won't be my suit, but that will probably actually push me into actually like really looking instead of occasionally applying to Suncoast like once every three or four months. Yeah. <laughs> which has been my MO so far, but I just, I'm just, it made sense when we were all together and especially during summer, we end up having like a lull. So, okay, you don't want someone taking 20 things at 4.30 in the morning when they get there 
and the person who comes strolls in the door at seven can't take anything. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But we are half staffed. We are in peak season. There is no end in sight to the cases. And I could even understand if you want to chase the people, a colleague of mine who took 40 cases on a Saturday one day. Please, by all means, that's dumb and unnecessary. Oh, she took them on the Saturday before her work from home week because there are cases we can prep. So these aren't even cases she could finish. By all means, if you want to chase that person, I can see the reason in that. Why are you analyzing what I'm doing? Literally, I'm your top performer. I'm your go-to for all four soups at two sites. I'm running your testing. I'm the only reason I'm dragging like a couple of these baskets out of awful numbers. Get out of my basket. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, or just watch and see what I do because they're like, well, but then the end of day numbers aren't accurate. It's like, they are, they're just not maybe perfectly time accurate because basically they're saying like I pulled them out, like I pulled some out today and I finished them tomorrow and they send out an end of day report tonight. Okay, yeah, they weren't done today, but then I won't take half as many out tomorrow. So it'll still like over the course of a week, it balances all out. I yeah. don't understand. Yeah, like ta <laughs> taking taking a fuck ton of cases before like <clears throat> before you spend a week where you can't work on them. That makes no sense to me. Like, why are you going to start things that you can't finish? Like, well, what what it was is we can do a um, we set up set them up from the people in the the in the office so they can attach the statements. So she's basically just being weirdly competitive about who's doing the most of that, even though none of us get any credit for it, other than our soups know we're doing stuff right now. Gotcha. Like, there's gotcha. literally no way to track who does what in that regard. Yeah. So she's just being weirdly competitive over that. And like, she can hey. do something, but she can't finish them. And I'm just like, that makes little sense. I, ju I just don't wanna, I don't wanna like completely trash it. It makes a little sense, but not much. She can't finish them. She can only work on them. Yeah. Well, so that seems dumb. It's and 40 is excessive. Even me at my worst has never had 40 in my basket. That's that's kind of like one of those weird flex but okay moments, you know? Yeah. Yeah, like, like weird flex I, but okay. I, and I don't care. Like, I don't look at other people's basket, but now that we all have laptops at home, some of the other group, I, well, okay. I look to see if there's stuff that I'm going to get surprised thrown on me. Basically, like, said person um, works on certain case types I do, and sometimes she'll forget to put something back and then put it back in the middle of the week. So I'll peek a couple times just to see, okay, do you have anything that I'm probably going to need to work on that I need to yank from you? Okay, no, cool, whatever. But apparently the other team is like analyzing who takes what and deciding who's cherry picking and who's not and like very hyper focused on all this. And I'm like, this is just bad. This is all bad. I mean, I... I... I don't. I don't have a problem with cherry picking. We do that at work all the time, based on you know just because of the nature of what we do in our um, development team. But like, like, why are you so concerned with what another team is doing? Well, because we're all the same team, mm. and like we were all one team until all this happened, mm -hmm. and it does really affect. Like, we really do affect the others. Like, if I, like. For example, I came into the film basket, because you're not going to understand the actual name of it. Sure. Had 23 items in it this week, which is a shit ton for film, because these items can take 15 to 20 minutes if they're good ones, or they can take, like, literally two hours while I go s slide by slide through a roll of film to try and find Joe Schmo's application. Wait, wait, wait. are y'all still using microfiche? Oh, oh, microfiche and microfilm. Yes. Is the easier side. Yes. That just, that makes me happy for the weirdest information, uh, like information systems reasons, but I'm sorry, go ahead. So, so 23 is a lot. Now, I'm a pattern person. I have noticed a pattern lately 
that I've been asked about several times. Where, when I come in for the week... Now note, this film basket is far from the only task I have. Mm -hmm. Far from the only task I have. Um, and in fact, prior to this, I was only a backup. I didn't even do this. Like, the other person did it all the time, and I would do it if she was out. Because I just did not have time on my plate for it with reports and all the other things I was doing. I just did not have time for these days of these cases. So, um, but I was trained in it, and I'm the only person trained in it on our week. So, well, it has to get done. So I come into 23 right now in that basket and I will get everything that I've taken out of it done. Right now there's one in that basket. So by the time I leave on Friday there might be like 7 or 8. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I leave at 7 or 8 and I come in to 23. Or I leave at 2 or 3 and come in to 18. Or such things. And from what I can tell the other group either needs more reading help or whatever. I don't know. I'm not there. I'm not a soup. Not my circus, not my monkeys. But I've noticed that pattern. Soups have noticed that pattern. They're like, what's going on with the other week? How would I know I'm not on it? I don't know. Why don't you ask Shell or Dennis? But I have to find polite ways of saying that. Right. Because, you know, I yep. can't just mouth off to a soup. Well, I could, but I like my job. Yeah, that's of. fair. You like so, having a job. I like having a job. <laughs> and... They keep asking this, and I'm like, I don't know. Shell's main task before we're split was film. My main task? I don't have a main task. I now do film. I do originals. I do rescans. I spend a day in RP every week because I'm training to be a full backup on RP, and I need to keep my skill set in that. I do reports. I catch fires. Like, I don't know, but I can do ten film cases in a day if I put my mind to it. I don't know why she doesn't manage five, you know, week. Don't know. But she's the one who takes 42 not film cases in her basket. So, you know, life and things and stuff. And basically, I'm very, very hyper aware of all the drama that's going on. And I'm just like trying to like, no, 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 no. And trying to dodge bullets. Yep. The music's gone, by the way. It just, it was taking a second to load the next track. Buffering! Yeah. It's like I told my, because I met with my soup for feedback today, because I'm a weirdo and go out of my way to ask for feedback, because I don't really get a lot at this job that isn't just keep doing everything you're doing, you're doing amazing, and I'm like, okay, but that doesn't give me anything I can improve on. Um... So I occasionally set up meetings, and, um, I totally lost my train of thought. But, either way, it's just, it's just a mess, and it's just all a mess, and she knows it. And I'm just like, I don't, I'm trying to, oh, I'm trying to dodge bullets with the other soups, because I'm testing in for a couple of the initiatives we have going on for the projects we're working on. And the other soup at the other site has come to me and has gone, does insert name of her one of her employees here need to test? And I'm like, I, I, I don't know. You are the soup. D d does she need to test? Like, do you want her to have the opportunity? Do you want her to test for her development? Do you want her to test because you want her input? That's fine. Do you want me to just do this? Because I already set up all the test cases and I'm most familiar with the whole setup at this point. Also fine. Not fine asking the employee to figure this out. Yeah, like that that shouldn't be... <laughs> like if you're the soup and someone on your team is has, has something that they may or may not need to do, it's your job to figure that out. Not an employee on a different team. Like, <laughs> like that's... Yep. <laughs> There's oh, something about her place of work and supervisors pawning all of their work off on her. Yeah. Yep. So my soup told me, she's like, she gave me some insight and she's like, so the, the name of the other soup, she's like, you're her go-to. She really likes your work. You're detailed. You give her more than she expects. She would prefer to work with you over anyone else on her team. 
that's great. But then she's also worried about the fact that she's not giving opportunities to anyone on her team. She's like, so she's probably trying to dump that off on you. I'm like, <sighs> how do I make this decision for, like, I can't make you not work with me. Like, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, I just. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I've I've been in sort of the reverse scenario before, where I've had, you know, managers above me who have, I I've seen them kind of like freaking out and drowning about stuff, and like they've got you know a bunch of different things going on, and they've got some task that just needs to get done, and they're concerned about how to get it done because they're in over their head. And so this is when I come in, I'm like, just what needs to be done? I, and I'm just like, it's handled. It's fine. And so I would take care of it. And I think that is sort of the genesis of how I have John snowed myself in the past, which is to say I kept getting management positions that I never asked for. See, that's what I've been doing here. I am that person who they will just give me things and I will just handle them. But it has gotten out of control. Yeah. Even to my soup's opinion. Like, I have a, the newest soup on the team. She only started being a soup, like, technically six months before COVID hit, but she was on maternity leave. So, like, two months before COVID hit. Um. And she even told me today, she's like, my role right now is to be a filter. For you she's like because literally Anshu is just like why don't we ask Elin and she's like we can figure this out we don't we don't need to ask Elin like sure Elin could have input but like we we, we can figure this out we're with the group the four of us can figure things out this is what we're paid to do you know <laughs> right like Jonas so I know you've like... done that too I know you have we've talked about that <laughs> So, like, I'm just very confused because, like, on one hand, I want to be an analyst and I want to learn new things and I want to do things. And on the other hand, I'm not a soup. Why am I doing soup job? You I've... understand that a lot of, like, there, there's a big realization that you're going to have at some point that, like, a lot of the things analysts do and it, you're just going to be like, oh, I've already do this. Oh, I already do that. Like, it's not everything. You will learn new things, and you will need to learn new things. But just the way that you do your current job and the way that you are in general, you're going to just do a lot of the things that you already do. That's what they keep telling me when I'm shadowing. They're like, oh, yeah, that's a good thing, and that's a really good thing, and not everyone has that, and some people have to develop that. And that was literally half of my shadowing yesterday was the, the fact that I'm always trying to learn things and improve things and stuff like that and figuring out things. Yeah. Like, yeah, that's like a lot of what you need. Yep. Yeah. It's almost like one of the things you need to do is analyze the business. If you want to be a business analyst, that's I just, that's, I just really want someone to give me an analyst job. Just, but I, my resume just doesn't scream analyst, I don't think. I don't know. Well, you know we've talked about that. I well, know, but that requires me actually, like, sending it to you. Well, clearly what you need to do is you need to walk into the interview. And by walk into the interview, I mean the uh, the video interview at this point, hopefully. And uh, you, just, you just look right in the camera and you just shout at the top of your lungs, Analyst! <laughs> no. Until they give it to you. No. No. What I need to do is find some flaw in their website and be like, hey, by the way, I noticed this, but also please give me a job. That's not how you get an no, that's, analyst that's job. That's how you get an IT job. <laughs> that's how you get a job in information security, and you don't want to do that. You don't want that job. No. No no one should work in information security, and it's a terrible industry, and, and everybody who's in it is miserable or an asshole or both. Of course, I guess like, that's basically miserable. all of tech, you're not isn't an it? an asshole. You might be miserable. Ha ha! <laughs> You're that close. You're so close. Just right there. <laughs> right there. Uh. <laughs> I don't know. It's just I'm just really tired of all of this. But I'm trying to stick it out. I feel like my best chance at an analyst is sort of with this company because at this point I've put on the dog and pony show for 
most people. But I also feel like with the way things are going, jumping ship might be a better idea anyways. So I stuck it out with my previous company for the better part of six years. Um, And for a long time, you know, it was part of it was getting a lot of good experience on my resume, which I really did. Um, and it helped me uh, get to where I am now. Part of it was the people. Um, like, this place had a bunch of, like, bullshit perks because it's a software company trying to do software company things. Um, didn't really care about all those perks. Um, like, I got to the point where I cared about, like, basically three things. What I was doing who I was doing it with and who I was doing it for. Um, which, I mean, I think any any job kind of boils down to those three things. Like, those are the things that should be most important to you. Because um, if you're not doing something that you enjoy or that you think is worthwhile, you shouldn't make yourself miserable over it. Um, if you've got a, you know... The people that you're doing this for don't give a shit about what you're doing. If you know that's that's incredibly demoralizing. Um, and if the people that you work with are a bunch of clowns and assholes, why bother? Because that's just going to make it even more miserable. So for a while, I basically had two and a half of those three things because um, I did enjoy what I was doing. Um, and I really enjoyed the people that I work with or worked with there. Um, especially like on my immediate teams. Um, I had, I had a couple of really, really good teams in the middle of some bigger departments that were, one was all right. One was not great. Um, and after what we call the snap the Thanos snap a um, couple of years ago now. Um, you know, I lost my team that I had at that time and basically just got shuffled into another team. And I think part of the reason why they kept me was that they thought that they could get like my level of throughput and still pay me not where I deserve to be for it. And, um, uh, you know, they, they laid off, I want to say like 15% of the company. Cause there were, there had been several acquisitions over several years and they had never like done a, any like reduction in force or whatever. Um, so, you know, being under new, um, um, uh, private equity overlords, basically, you know, everything becomes a numbers game. So they get rid of like a lot of people who are, um, on paper, high dollar value or making too much money or, um, you know, just trying to basically squeeze stuff out where they can. And, um, you know, I had the promise of, well, we're going to give you a pretty good increase, which that p- pretty good increase was going to be like, I don't know, like seven or eight percent, which would have still put me underpaid for the market value that I'm at by like 12 to 15 grand, something like that. And uh, I'm like, no. This is trash. I didn't want to be there anyway, because, like, my team was gone. Like, my team got decimated. Um, There were 10 of us on my immediate team. Um, My boss got, he got laid off. A couple of other people on our team got laid off. And then one of my developers that worked for me got laid off, and they didn't even tell me. So, um, if I hadn't found out, um, through the grapevine, I would have found out the morning 
it happened after it happened. That's when I would have found out. Um, so at that point, I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm underpaid. I don't have, I'm not on, like I got thrown on this other team that was just kind of like, okay, not that anybody on the team was bad. Just like I didn't vibe with that team at all. Um, and I'm like, I, I don't want to do this anymore. Like, they wanted me to do other stuff that I just had zero interest in doing. And I'm like, nope, this is it. I'm done. I'm out. So uh, I went to a place for a couple of months. Um, and again, the immediate team was really good. The company as a whole did not jive with. Just, just did not feel it. Um, very archaic management practices. They're in like... Um, like fleet management, um, so um, like safety and, and logging devices on trucks, forklifts, stuff like that. Um, uh-huh. So you know, very much a, a a lot of I guess I want to say antiquated business practices, you know, management styles, things like that. Um, uh-huh. And so, what's funny is one of the things that I asked for is like I'm I'm like I want to work from home. I want to work remote part time. And they're like, no, we can't do that. I'm like, can't or won't. It was basically just like, whatever. Um, Like, yeah, that's not something that we're willing to do. I'm like, okay, I'm going to go somewhere else where I can do that. So I went to the credit union that was 50% remote. And then I go to the credit union and six months later, what happens? COVID hits and everybody goes home. And it's kind of like, you know, you, you... You didn't want to give me remote, but then you had to make people remote anyway. And that's, you know. I, I kind of feel like anymore, if the, if you ask people like that you want to go remote and they tell you no, like there is not a correct answer to that. Unless, especially in our line of work, there's no, re- like, nope. You, I can see it if your job demands you to be on site for any yeah, reason. Yeah. Then, yeah, but we don't need to be on site. No. If we, if we need to be in site to do our jobs, then I don't want to work on that infrastructure, to be perfectly honest. Well, and, and you know, I know a lot of people will come up with the whole security thing because we're, you know, you and I, we work for a credit union who has over $11 billion in assets. We're like the, I think we're now like the eighth largest credit union in the nation by, um, by no like amount of assets and so for us security is a huge deal like it's a big big deal because we have a lot of people's fucking money and um when you know like it was it was it was this week last year when everybody got sent home and our it department spun up like they went from they went from everybody being in the office to almost everybody being at home. And in a week, they had it like there were some hiccups, but they had it all working in a week. And now it's gotten to the point to where, you know, we've done it for so long now. And the 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 development team has gotten so efficient at what we do that we're just not going to come back in at all. Like our VP told us, he's like, you know what? This is, seems to be working out really well. So we're just going to stay fully remote unless you want to come in. And this was the guy that hired us, both me and Lollipop specifically to have developers in the office more because before he hired us and like the guy that came before us um, a few months before us, everybody else was remote, even the people here locally. Um, so, it's 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 a at this point like now that we've gone through all this anybody who says that you can't be remote for the line of work that we're in there's there's just no way like i'm still getting messages from recruiters who are like who are open to remote like open to remote bitch there's a pan fucking demic you better be like a hundred percent remote or you can kiss the fattest part of my ass because I'm not going into an office with any for, with anybody right now. Like I had to drag my ass into the office to go get my shit. You kidding me? 
And then I went ahead and got lollipop shit while I was there because his desk was next to mine and I didn't want, you know, both of us to have to go. That didn't make any goddamn no sense to me. Multi, multiple people to go in, yeah. Yeah, yeah. he wasn't going. Like, we, we have fought any time they've brought up him going in with, with the health risks our thing has. You, you talk about security, but I work for a company that has 1.4 trillion assets under management. Mm-hmm. And... We're still working on Internet Explorer because we can't get some of our stuff to function on anything else. And and you know why that is? Because so many of these companies look at the cost to, to change something, and they don't look at the cost of continuing to use something old. And they don't think about the those costs. Like, it's it's... In their minds, it's cheaper to continue using Internet Explorer now because it doesn't cost them anything up front than it does to change the things that they need to change to in order to get off of Internet Explorer, which is insecure and also non-standards compliant. And this is something that, you know, four years ago, you would have never caught me dead saying, yeah, I wouldn't talk, you know, a word of shit about Internet Explorer, but it's not a thing anymore. Like, it's 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 gone. It's, it's bad oh, news. Right, yeah, exactly. Um, so, you know, you they wouldn't talk shit about a Microsoft product? What? I know. No, like, I mean, there's Edge I now, know. but they're slowly trying to convert things, but it's just... Yep. It's really hard when pretty much all of your development team has a different primary language than you. Yeah, average team 20% less productive. Like, no. No, horse shit. Like, if that's... If, if, if there are teams that are less productive because of this, which do... Do not misunderstand me. I understand that people are going to be less productive in a pandemic. This is a pandemic where life has got like completely fucked up and turned upside down. Yeah, right. And <laughs> and we're we're all fucking depressed about it. And like like shit's not normal. Shit is not fucking normal. Yet our team we're actually the most efficient we've ever been right now. And part of that, I think, is because of the way our team operates. Like, um, not only has I, as, as our IT and IS departments provided us, like, the tools and infrastructure we need to actually get our jobs done remotely, which I know we give them a lot of shit for things breaking, but having been on that side of the world before, like, IT is a completely thankless job. Lollipop, you know this. Jonas, you absolutely know this. Um, IT is a thankless job because you own like IT only ever gets talked to or about when something's broken. So it's 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 like two sides of this like just shit coin where it's like, well, things are broken. What are you doing? Well, everything's working. What are we paying you for? It's like that's what the fuck you're paying me for is because everything's working, and people don't understand that. So again, I, I know that we like at work, even us in the app dev department, we give the IT folks, you know, we give them a ration of shit, but we do it like we, we're, we're poking fun at them and like they know that we understand their pain because we've a lot of us have been in that position before. Um, selling our IT. Huh? They're going to sell them. They're selling our IT team to another company. That's becoming more and more of a thing. The, the software company I used to work at that Lollipop and I were both at, and that's, that's, that's what industry they specialize in is, is software for companies that manage IT for other companies. Um, but like, yeah, like it's I, like this, this, I last don't understand how that works when someone has to come in and change the toner and printers. Like, yeah, but like we're, we're, you know, like, like there's, there's, we've, like things have changed. Things aren't normal anymore. Like this is this is the way this 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 is the way things are now, and like like you said, like I understand if there are jobs that require a physical presence. For example, we're, we're credit unions. You know, like we have people that are in branches, like like people who are customers who are members of the credit union who need things done, like they have to come in and make deposits or withdrawals or apply for loans or take care of things or something happens and they have to speak to someone at the credit union, like they have to come into a branch for that. I, I That's like you have to have a physical presence there. You can't just put everybody into a call center 
like the industry isn't there. Like we, one of the presents, huh? Those are called gifts. (laughs) Gifts. Shut up. (laughs) Um, God, I hate you so much. No, I don't. (laughs) But I hate you so much. Um, but those, you know, like those, we still have to have people like in the building for that kind of stuff. So I wouldn't expect those people to be remote. Now, we are doing a lot of things, especially our team, because our team at work, we specialize in building internal use tools for the folks that are helping out our our members. So, you know, we're trying to make things as, as digital first as possible to make things a lot faster and easier. But that's still going to, you know, there's, there's still going to be that need for people in the building to take care of those customer needs. But for us... We're just building the software. I have a VPN connection to the office. I have all of our shit. Like even like our shit's even all locked down through Microsoft controlled access policies. Like we can't get into our like our Outlook or Teams or anything else unless we are on the network on the VPN. So like shit is secure. Shit is locked the fuck down. And I'm in meetings like these change control meetings every week where IT and IS and AppDev are all talking about changes that we're about to make to production systems, whether it's like we're doing our normal deployments of our online and mobile banking or our internal use tools, or IS is going and changing firewall rules somewhere, or IT engineering is changing configurations of shit out in the cloud or whatever it may be. Like, we're in the loop of all these changes, so I know the kind of shit that they're doing to keep our stuff secure and working. And at the same time, they're making sure things still work for us so that we can work remote because that's just the nature of it now. Like, that's that's the world we're in now. I still want my UAC prompt to not be as annoying as it is, but I don't think I'm getting that. Well, mm. we'll, we'll get there. I might, maybe I can fuck around with it later, I don't know. But, you know, the, my point is, like, this is, this, like, the world is different. Like, the way we work is different. And people don't understand, like, this isn't something that we've gradually gone into. Like, some companies have, like, slowly prepared for this and, and gotten people, you know, working remote or whatever. But most places, they had this thrust upon them. And they've had to adapt incredibly quickly or they have died. Or they were Some killed. Some of them rolled a one. <laughs> Some of them rolled a one, and they hit themselves in the face, um, repeatedly with a sword. But you know, people want to talk about how you know how people are less efficient. Like, yeah, of course we're going to be fucking less efficient because like people have children that are home from school, so they're having to take care of them, and and you know halfway be their teacher because their teacher can't be there to also babysit because that's let's be real teachers do a hell of a lot of that too while they're trying to actually educate children so parents have to fill in that role for now so they have to watch their kids during the day while they're also trying to work and then for those of us who don't have kids you know we're still having to do our jobs i me i i i I barely get i barely leave the house like i'll leave the house to pick up food like, I was out of the house today for, like, I don't know, an hour and a half, maybe? Because we went to go pick up lunch, and then we actually sat in the car to eat the lunch at, that we picked up instead of bringing it home. Like, what a concept. And then we went to pick up, you know, like an or, an order, like a pickup order from the store. So, like, like that's, that's, that's the most that I get out of the house, really, is that... Um, and so, you know, we, this is, this is like, you know, for people like me who, one of the things that, that I do normally to keep my sanity is to go out to lunch with my friends. I don't do that. I've, I've done that like, like a handful of times over the last year. Like we'd go on a Saturday to go get hot dogs and sit in a parking lot with our cars, you know, parked apart and then just yell at each other from each other's cars while we're eating hot dogs. Like that's, you know, that's, that's, that's no way to just felt awful. Like even the few things we've done, I was just not, it's almost more of a reminder that nothing's normal. Right. And that's the thing. Like, like you do these little things to try to, 
to gain some sense of normalcy. And like you said, it reminds you that things aren't normal, that things are fucked up. Now, thankfully, little by little, tiny little, things are getting better. And and I know it's going to ebb and flow because people are going to get a little too excited about doing things and they're not going to, they're going to just drop all precautions and it is what it is. I but. am concerned because we are approaching, um, I mean, not yet, but our, our date of return, at least the only one they've given us so far is June. Obviously, they're not like 100% committed to it right now. It's just that was what they took a stab at, like, I think last September. Mm -hmm. And they haven't canceled it yet. Um, and I know we have at least a few who aren't going to get the vaccine. And we have, um, because it was already brought up that, okay, well, you know, because they know, I'm pretty sure they can't, like, they could mandate, but I, I'm pretty sure they feel like they can't mandate the vaccine. Yeah. So, um, they, I know it's been in talks of like, well, what does it look like? Do we have, because right now what we have is we, uh, wear masks in the common areas, but like if we're at our desks or at like a place we're sitting by ourselves, we don't wear them, um. And I know it's been brought up, like, maybe we wear masks, like, the whole day, since, well, there's no way to spread us out in the space we're in if you bring everyone back. And, um, Pizza's Late was already complaining that she couldn't do that because of her lungs, so. Uh, she can shut up. <laughs> so. The asthmatic is, is gonna chime in here and then tell her that she can go to hell. So where her pizza so. is going to be late for all of eternity because so, fuck her. I mean, as you can tell, I already have <laughs> opinions and feelings about this person being that they have a nickname of pizza's late and I'm typically not the vindictive type, but, but uh, oh. again, like, like lollipop just said, you know, it's like, Oh, I can't breathe. You know, lollipop, who is an asthmatic, who <laughs> also has sleep apnea. Like he has, like he's one COPD short of having like the trifecta of, of like chronic breathing problems. And he, oh he can, he can wear a fucking mask when he needs to. Right. Yeah. And I can I, wear it for extended periods of time too. I was going like, to say, I think the only thing we found was that like being outside and doing outside things on the mask was not your favorite. Which I'm not surprised about. But I mean, I think, like that's the only thing you figured out. But oh, I mean, no, being physical outside, activity, being outside is eh, it's eh, anyway. It's not his you know? favorite thing to do anyway. Exactly, yeah, exactly. Like it's you know so plus the, the, uh, being outside wearing a mask walking around is a bit different than staying in a climate controlled building wearing a mask all day long right right yeah. and well she and... offered to wear it in spurts and i just put my head oh, back in she so graciously offered to be a <laughs> respectable human being for what probably 30 percent of the day i don't know i don't <laughs> that's that's not how any of that fucking works <laughs> that's <laughs> that is not how that works i'm gonna put it on in spurts <laughs> sure sure <laughs> Yeah, well, when you um, when you spurt a fucking virus at me, then I'll be I'll be grateful for the times that you were wearing a mask. Thanks. The 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 reason she has this nickname is our company provided food twice a week at the beginning of the pandemic as a hey, we know you're working half staff, you know, blah blah blah. Thank you. And it turns out, although I don't think we knew this initially, this was all actually started buy our, our soup like our soup was buying us food out of her pocket and the company was like blah 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 fairness blah 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 does it for everyone like like every everyone in our two teams like not everyone in the company but whatever so our soup has meetings which this is i'm sure a shock to you because you know managers and supervisors have meetings sometimes so sometimes she can't go pick up. We all start pretty early, so she li would like to pick up the food at around like 12, but sometimes it ends up running a little bit late. Ideally for us would be 1130, but that just doesn't happen. And uh, um, <laughs> she, uh, so we don't know because it's all anonymized, but my soup 
got feedback on her first thing that has a lot of meetings. Pizza's late. That was one of her comments. And the only person who said anything about it is uh, Pizza's late has reminded us that she's diabetic and needs food at specific times. And she's the one who has fussed over the pizza being late. So ever since, I have called her Pizza's late. Okay. Pizza's <laughs> late. Okay. First of all, spurts. Uh, second of all, <laughs> second of all, moist doesn't bother me. I I have moist doesn't bother me either. <laughs> I I, I <laughs> love you. Um, I create. Listen, I I went through and rebranded an entire product on a, an instance called Moist, and it's all like baked goods because delicious, delicious cake. Um, mm, moist cake. Hmm. I found the tea rather moist as well. Um, <laughs> God, I'm not clicking on that. I don't trust it. Um, so, uh, pizza is late. Uh, grown ass adult? Yes? No? Yes. So she's at least 50. Okay. So, so, when you are a grown ass adult and you have a known medical condition... You plan ahead for these things. Bring yourself a fucking like some kind of 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 bar that will help you, like a like a protein bar or a uh, you know like a, a a granola bar or something that will orange juice, great one, perfect. Bring yourself like a little bottle of orange juice. They make you they, mean walk down to the cafe like she does and get her little bottle of Mountain Dew most days. You have a cafe on site. Yes. Well, then tell her to go fuck herself and go get herself a fucking Mountain Dew if she wants to, and she can go get her own fucking Mountain Dew and then wait for the fucking pizza to arrive. But when you're an adult who has this thing and is fully capable of taking care of yourself, then you do it or you shut the fuck up about it. Because when somebody else is buying you pizza, and it's not you there on the fuck up, and you enjoy it, and it's not there on time, and you need to deal with your diabetes, have a fucking sip of Mountain Dew, and wait. Like deal with it. I'm from the South. We invented diabetes. We fucking deal with it. I mean, not me personally. <laughs> Not me personally, thankfully. I don't have to. I don't have to deal with it. But we fucking deal with it. I had a guy on my team that had diabetes, and you know, like, like he was he was full on type one, walking around. Man, he he had his he had his fucking meter with him at all times, and god damn it, like he he did it, and and he he kept up with it and made sure it was taken care of, and that was it. I know it's magical, right? Right? Like and this is a guy in his mid 20s. If a guy in his mid 20s can handle it, someone twice his age should goddamn better be able to do it. All right, Jonas, I have I have several flavors. I have um original. I have yogurt covered, chocolate covered, trail mix, and then I have the variety box, and in the variety box I have original, I have cherry, I have watermelon, I have orange, I have raspberry lemonade, and I have, what was the other one? Strawberry? Did I say strawberry? Original, like cherry, raw watermelon, <laughs> rawberry. Fuck strawberries. Sports. Uh. <laughs> Are there any ah. things you haven't tried yet? Um, let's see. I, I've I, I've certainly tried original. Of course, cherry's my favorite. I've done the watermelon. Oh, that's right. I forgot about that. Yeah. I tell you what. I tell you what. I have not. The the only one in here that I haven't tried is the strawberry one. Why don't I? Do you want me to do the raspberry lemonade? I can do that. Okay, I will do the raspberry lemonade. Now let's see what we got here. Doo -doo -doo -doo. All right, there you go, sir. Doo -doo -doo. Raspberry lemonade. Doo -doo -doo -doo. It's funny though that you say like the who you work with, who you work for, and and what you do. I was sitting there and I'm like, 
I'm at a 1.5 out of 3. Because I sort of like what we do, but I also am sort of depressed by some of the things I see and now know about the financial state of our world. Mm -hmm. And I have at least one to two good friend coworkers, and the rest I could mostly care less about. There are a couple awful ones, but the most most of them are awash. But I'm also not the friendliest. So one to two is actually like more than I expect. <laughs> but then 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 we have pizzas late, so um and then who I work for, I really like my direct soup, but the management chain gets kinda wonky and there are some definite things like I was told not to go for the soup position because I hadn't done the mentorship stuff and that was basically an unwritten requirement to promotions and I, I hate unwritten requirements mm -hmm. like if you want to make that a requirement fucking tell me and I would have signed up for the mentorship shit like the second or third year I was there but yeah I hate that kind see of that like... to me that's that's a red flag to me in general because that means if it's an unwritten one that means they're trying to they want that for someone but they don't want to put it on there because they don't uh, on the list of things because they don't want to pay for it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. well it's it, the mentorship stuff was all free because it was all within the company it's more just that they don't and I'm sure you guys maybe see some of it, although credit unions are rebels, so maybe you don't. But finance has a lot of good old boy clubisms, even though it's not a good old boy. Like, we're pretty equivalent on, like, the gender spectrum. Like, don't get me wrong, I'm not, not saying that. But there's just a lot of the, oh, you talk to so-and-so and you get to know them and then they put in a good word for you. And, like, it, there's just, like, a lot of clicky crap. That's how it is in software engineering in general, but the credit union, I will say, and I'm, I've been there a full year and a half now, like this week's a year and a half for me, and I'm still skeptical as fuck. Like, it's just, it's weird to me because I started, and in my first day, we had new employee orientation, we had Neo, and we had a panel of some of the senior staff, so... The CEO, the COO, um, like, our, who else was there? Like, the the person in charge of all of our branch operations, um, and a couple of others. I forget who all was there. And um, they basically had this lunch panel with us, so... You know, we got catered lunch for our orientation, and this panel of senior staff came in and basically, like, whatever questions y'all have, you know, ask us. So, uh, I'd been hearing about, like, the credit union mission and everything like that, and credit unions are all about serving their members, like, whatever they can to serve their members in their community, which... Sounds great on the surface, but I too have worked in for corporations, and I know, mm. <laughs> I know that's you know usually ends up being bullshit. And um, so we're ha we have this panel, and I ask, and like the CEO, he started off in the mail, like literally in the mail room, like he's. Like, not even joking, he started off in the mailroom and has is now the CEO of the credit union. Um, he was like, I want to say he was the actual, the first IT director of the credit union, like when they actually, you know, got got into IT back in like the 80s. Um, so he's been at the credit union for a fucking long time, okay? So he, I'm like, I'm like, all right. Kevin, I gotta ask you. I, by the way, I get on first name basis with people. I don't care if they're scrubbing toilets or they're the CEO. I call them by their first name. I don't call Mr. Mrs. Whatever. Like you have a first name, I'm going to use it. Get over it. I, I, I'm very familiar. Whether that's good or bad, it's worked out for me so far. So I'm like Kevin. I gotta ask you, man. Like you know. 
the all of this stuff like like I've I've come from a place and I've I've been bitten by it and I'm incredibly skeptical like do you really believe this and why and like they all had really good answers for it like and the more I work at this place the more it's like wow these like these people really have drank the Kool-Aid like we'll do things and we have our sprint review every two weeks and people in the sprint review, we have external stakeholders, folks like our um, folks that work in the branches in the call center um, in the different departments like loans and mortgages. Um, and um, even like our chief operations officer, she'll, she'll jump in cause she is not shy. She is very much from New York and she's very much not shy. And Lollipop, you know who I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. And so, like, she'll jump in and she'll ask. She'll ask all kinds of stuff. She's like, well, you know, how is such and such a thing? Like, are our members going to be able to do this? Are members, will members have the opportunity to do that? And, like, people ask these questions on behalf of the member. Like, we're a place that, like, if a member calls in and complains to the CEO about how something works... He'll track it down and figure out how we can change it to make it where it's better for this one member. Like, it's... Well, no, we just lay off a project manager in the middle of the day two part of the project. That's another thing. They made it a point to, like, when we had the recession a few years ago, you know, and, and layoffs were a big deal. The credit union never laid anybody off. They went through and they told everybody, everybody's taking a pay cut and... Like, the higher up you were, the bigger a pay cut you took at the time, but no one got laid off. Absolutely not, no one has ever gotten laid off from the credit union. Um, and, like, after the recession, like, started to swing back up, and things, like, you know, numbers started going back up at the credit union, they put people back where they belong, and then gave them the, their normal, comp like, their normal increases as, as they, uh, you know, usually would, and... Like it's it boggles my mind that there is a place that that does this, but they do, and like every single day, I'm like, there's something, there's something here, and I can't find it. Like I'm just, I'm amazed by it, and it, you know, maybe I'm cynical because of just working in IT and software development for so long now, and I've seen just how shitty companies are. But you, you like, you're right, man. Credit unions are different. They're different in, like, a good way. I mean, I think part of it is that that is their whole reason to exist. Mm-hmm. Is to be different. Mm -hmm. So, like, and I'm not saying that, like, to shit on them. Like, that's the only, you know, but I I think that's part of it. But I don't know. It, I'm, I don't know. I really honestly should probably job hunt because at this point I'm chasing a position when we're offshoring as much as we can, but yeah, that's scary. Mm. Yes, Jonas, that is an excellent point. Remember, if you're gonna buy, if you're gonna buy the cookies, buy the cookies before the end of the week. Otherwise, you will Do not have a chance to order this week. Mm -hmm. They go back into the vault. Why in this day and age are they limited, time limited? Production schedules. Eh, that's fair. And probably hype. Let's be real. Mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm. To make the tagalongs more special. It's true. And the s'mores. And the s'mores. Mm. S'mores aren't special. but They're the special to me. Are. Listen, I'll, I'll eat the s'mores for okay. you. That way you don't have to. You can eat the tagalongs. I'll eat the s'mores. All right. Deal. There you go. See, it works out. And now, now we have, now we have. There is now once again balance in the force. Exactly. Oh. So, yeah. I mean, if I know, I know it's a lot easier to say than it is to actually do. But you know, if you're if you're not happy with what you're doing or where you're doing it or the people you're working with, 
or the people you're doing it for, like customers and or, you know, management structure. You know, I I would I would I would highly encourage you to start exploring your options. And I know and you it's weird I like it enough. Like and I'm getting the challenges, you know, like it, it's basically like at this point I wouldn't hop for anything less than analyst because I'm basically getting all of these sub experience I probably could in any other position yeah but but with all the rumors of them possibly selling us off or going to BNY Mellon like our acquisition did it, it it's all kind of jumble I mean that's that's exactly what happened where we were you know where I was a year and a half ago or two years ago now um, <laughs> I like what Jonah said me sense great cookie disturbance that's pretty good. There. Eat or do not. <gasps> Allie's here. Hi, Allie. Allie. We, you know, we were just talking about um, getting new jobs, and Allie was forced to get a new job, but I think she is a lot happier where she is now versus where she was. Um, and I mean, she was, I think she was, Allie, you were like, before all of that happened, you were, weren't you starting to look anyway, just because you weren't really happy with the, the way that the, the leadership structure was treating all of y'all. Um, I know she was, she had been having some problems anyway. Um, so, uh, for, you know, for those of you who don't know, Allie is a, she's a middle school teacher. Uh, she's a middle school English teacher. Um, very, very well read, um, very literate, unlike me. I don't know, I don't know anything and I don't, I can't read words or, or things. I look at the pictures. You can though. read, you can read the, the crazen packs. No, I just look like, see, there's like on here, there's a picture of a watermelon. And then uh, on, uh. on this one, there's a picture of a cherry <laughs> with a cherry stem. Uh. <laughs> and then... This one just has cranberries on it, so I know it's the original. This one has Jonas. Don't look, Jonas. 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 Don't look. This this one has strawberries. Okay, you can look again. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I told you not to look. I told you to avert I, your I, eyes. I, I told, <laughs> avert your eyes. <laughs> avert your eyes. <laughs> No, you have an no, eye grade. Oh, eye Jesus grade. Christ. Get out. Just get out. Get out. Uh, but, yeah. Um, <laughs> dang. Dang. I have, I, have, I have shooed Jonas away with strawberries. Um, yeah, and that's, that's kind of the thing that we were talking about, Allie. Like, for me, I have... I have really three criteria when I decide whether I'm I want to be or stay at a job and that's you know do I enjoy what I'm doing do I enjoy who I'm doing it for whether that's customers or management structure and do I enjoy who I'm doing it with and that's like my my team and the people that I all you know work with internally you know outside of my team and um it's just it's it's when I left the the place I left um almost two years ago now, um, I had, you know, two, I had like two and a half of those and they got taken away from me. Um, and that's when I decided, you know, it's time for me to go somewhere else. Um, and I'm the kind of person that if I don't like what I'm doing, where I'm doing it, I'm, I won't stay. Um, thankfully I'm, I'm, I've, I've kind of learned to, 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 to hone that and figure out pretty quickly whether a place is is going to be one of those good places for me um and i'm also incredibly privileged to to have both the skill set um slash resume and um the um i guess sort of not having the the barriers that other folks have um because if you look at me, you can probably tell what I mean. Um, 
And so I, 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 I don't have a lot of stuff standing in my way to be able to, to get a better job somewhere else. And so I haven't. Um, so I'm, I'm very, very fortunate to be where I am now. Um, and I have a, I have, I've, I have a good paying job at a great place. I work with a lot of good people. Um, I also work with Lollipop. You, you know, it's fine. No, he's my favorite. That's a mixed bag. He's, <laughs> he's my favorite. Um, but we. Um, Damn. Okay, like you're, you're like my, you're like my third favorite. Who's your second favorite? <laughs> um. I'm trying to think. No, actually, I think you would be you would be my favorite. I think Amanda would be my second favorite, even though she doesn't watch the stream because it doesn't have anything for her. But if we play if we play Stardew, she'll watch. So you know, I guess I got to get a rig now. Um, but yeah, it's you know, it's it's like when when you don't have those people you know it's 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 sad it's hard like i every single day i think about people that i used to work with and that i miss working with um and you know i'm in a really great place now but i i just i i miss those people i miss the people that i i i you know i i i had been working with so you know, it's, uh, it's tough. So I, Elena, I would encourage you if, if you are, you know, if you're willing to, to take the chance and, and, and do that. And it sounds like, you know, factors being what they are, you know, Should. you, your it's hand. It's mostly just the effort of job hunting. I'm just kind of. I'm putting it off is what I'm doing, and, whether that's for good or for bad. And I understand that. I mean, I've, hell, I put off finding a therapist for like, I don't know, like eight years or some shit, and, and I finally I'm did. I'm putting off, too. I'm really good at putting things off. Can I put that on my resume? Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, that's a, uh, <laughs> what's the opposite? Sure that's frowned upon in most societies, what's, but. What's the opposite of a, what's the opposite of a project manager? Oh. Um. <laughs> I'm trying to think. What would be a job for you? Because project managers are designed to get shit done. What's somebody that's designed to? I mean, I guess you could be QA. you could be QA. <laughs> I was gonna say QA. <laughs> be like, mm, wait, but did you consider this? Because this is fucked up. Go fix it. A project <laughs> chaoticizer, a project unmanager. These are good. These are good. I like this. I like this a lot. Um. But is a project chaoticizer. A chaoticizer. <laughs> yep. Um, but I mean, I would encourage you to to you know to get your resume updated, and I I've told you I'd help you with that. You know that. Um, I know. I'm just scared of it. <laughs> I know. I understand. I trust me. I get it. Like. I was I was nervous about getting back out there even just with even with the like the pretty good streak that I had of you know being able to to get jobs and um I I had to I had to make a change um and again thankfully like I'm in a I'm in a good place now um I still very casually look because I never want to like pass up anything good. But, um, you know, I'm I'm in a place right now where I don't need to look. Like I have a secure job. I have a good job. I'm happy with my work. Like there's there's always going to be weeks like last week where I just had a really off week and 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 things did not come together until like the last second on a Monday. Um, that's going to happen. I understand that. That that but would that happen. That wasn't the credit union. That's just. That's just coding. me. That's just yeah. That's just the nature. That yep. That's me. That's you're right. That's coding. Like coding does that. You know, like it's any kind of thing that's going to be like mentally intensive like that is going to happen. You know, like yeah, Jonas, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. Like it's. Like being at a at a job that's not great for you is, you're. I mean, you're in a bad relationship with your employer, 
you know, your, your employment relationship is still a relationship, you know, whether that's a professional relationship in which you, you know, you trade your soul for currency that you can then trade for goods and or services like it's cameras and internet connections with which to talk to people about your shitty jobs. <laughs> it's kind and occasionally of, play video games. Video games. It's kind of weird because like, I don't know if you've ever been at a company like this, but the company has good bones. Like, the benefits are good. The 401k match is amazing. Like, I hear things about things that went on before the buyouts happened, which I started at the first buyout, um, because our department lost way more than they expected or could handle. Um, so, like, there is some of the culture that is at least good to employees. There's still some of the unwritten things, but, like treat the employees well kind of stuff but then there's all this new like cost cutting and it's it's a weird juxtaposition because mm -hmm. like i'm not i'm going to lose benefits like suncoast's benefits do not match what i have uh, no matter where i go even if like we take lollipops health insurance i'm going to lose benefits mm -hmm. so like that's a that's kind of part of my calculus like nowhere else is going to match 85 cents on the dollar for my 401k like nowhere mm -hmm. like um i mean maybe another bank or something but it's not a lot of them so like it's this weird like mix of you do you have you had some of the right structure but you're taking it all down to save money and it's confusing yeah yep yep they're not shitty through and through or i probably would have left by now yeah and it's you the the thing that you have to keep in mind though you know you mentioned the company having good bones and there's a lot of there are a lot of like on paper reasons for you to stay and i'm not scoffing at benefits absolutely not like if you if you can get a place that has you know really good retirement matching and great health insurance benefits that are also you know that they make affordable for you like that's that's a huge deal i mean like that's that's a big, big deal. And those things should absolutely be factored in as you need them. Um, but also, you know, like Allie was talking about how she's she's had pause to think about whether she, or not she wants to come back to her new job next year. Because when she got laid off earlier this year, she found a new job really quickly. Which I'm not surprised about because I know that she has not only does she have a strong resume, but I know she's also an in, like a very very talented instructor. So it's not you know it wouldn't be hard for her to find another job. Um, and I think you're in the same position. Like you are incredibly good at what you do. Otherwise, you wouldn't be so efficient at what you do. And also, you wouldn't have everybody else coming to you to have you do everything for them like they have been. Um, do I think that they're taking advantage of you? Absolutely. They absolutely are taking advantage of you. Do you know this? Yes, you also know this. You know this. I know this. Lollipop knows this. We all know this now. Um, but this is one of those things where you, you know, it's... It, you you kind of... syndrome is a beast, though, dude. Huh? Imposter syndrome is a beast, though, dude. I, t t you're, you're fucking telling me. I... Y you're not telling me anything I don't know. Trust me, I get it. I know. I know firsthand because I have to remind myself that I I wouldn't be where I am today if I didn't know what I was doing or if I at least wasn't really good at bullshitting about what I know. And I actually do get results and I do pretty good. Um, I will say like before I got into software, when I was still in IT and doing like network admin and, and systems administration and help desk and shit like that, that I actually had a lot of, um, I had a lot of, of confidence in my abilities there and certainly not cocky, but you know, I, I knew what I did know. And I also knew what I didn't know. Um, and that's, you know, those are knowing what you don't know is even more important than knowing what you do know. Um, but I, you know, I knew that I could, I was good at what I did. Like I knew that I was good at what I did. Um, going into software, you know, this, it's a little different and 
it's not IT. Like software, I've been doing longer than I've been doing IT. I've been playing around with code since I was a kid. So, you know, code's like, code's just sort of a natural thing for me. And yet somehow I still have times when I'm like, why, like, why am I doing this? Like, how, how am I getting this done? How, how has no one figured out that I don't know what I'm doing? Like at the old company, we had people like, like the joke was go ask Zach, he knows everything. But like, they were, they were serious about it too. And I'm like, I'm, I'm like, I'm trying to tell you people, I don't actually know any of this shit. I have no idea what I'm doing. Um, and yet people would still come to me to answer or for answers to questions about stuff. And like, I would have like random, like bullshit knowledge, but you know, it just, it, it kind of worked out, but yeah, yeah, you're not wrong. But also you have to remind yourself that if you didn't know what you were doing, people wouldn't constantly keep coming to you to do stuff. Because obviously you've proven to them, even whether or not you think you know what you're doing, they think you know what you're doing. They think that you're getting it done, which you are. But They're that's very wrong sometimes. Huh? They're very wrong sometimes. Sure. I get up as I go. Sometimes. Well, sure. I I mean, we're all fucking making it up as we go. We ev I'm every copy it from the last time we did it. Yeah. Because I hold on to all the information, and uh, so the UAT I designed for this is just me wholesale taking Matus's UAT and redoing it. You know what that's called? That's called experience. When you're when you're copying the the thing that you've done before, that's called experience. <laughs> Being the only person with a functioning memory is a whole thing. Yeah, that's that's I true had, too. I'm so confused. The SME who trained me on nearly half the crap I know asked me today what we do with a case. Because, okay, so people ask for statements, and you can either do this through our website on your own, or you can call in, and the person who you talk to will put in a case. Mm -hmm. Well, if you do this on the website, we'll send, and you ask for something that doesn't exist, like, and that's the only thing you'll ask for, we'll send you a handy-dandy, basically professional, what oh we don't know what you're asking for, email. And that's all well and good, because you put it in on your own. But when a processor puts in the case, they're supposed to make sure that this thing actually exists. Like, because they can look it up themselves. Mm -hmm. So they're supposed to make sure that what they put a case in for is actually a thing. And she's like, what letter do we send out if there isn't any? And I'm like, we, we, we don't send out letters if there isn't any. We only send out letters with stuff. If there's nothing there, we don't send out letters. And I, in my head, I'm going, you trained me on literally like two-thirds of what i know in this department and yet you have now become this me <laughs> but like, that's like on? that's like what jonas just said being the being like the only person with a functioning memory is a whole ass thing like you're like like ali like you you have become that go-to person now you are you are the go-to person i don't understand i don't listen i'm yeah I've been the go-to person. I don't understand it either. I, I somehow I think I'm becoming the go-to person at this job, and I, I don't want it. Yeah, you, well, you just said that you'd only been there a year and a half, and I'm like, wait, 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 what? In my head, because the way Lollipop talks about you, I thought you'd been there for like five years or something. No, I started a month before he did. I started a, yeah. like an actual month before he did, like Chris, a literal talking, month. We can't hear you. But oh, sorry, because all I can hear is that blah 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 blah, and I doubt I, that that was what you said. I muted because uh, we were scrounging in the drawer next to me looking for batteries. So mm, batteries. Ah, uh, but yeah, like I thought you'd been there for like five years or something. No, yeah, he has. No, no, I absolutely. <laughs> Okay, that depends. So, are you are we talking about calendar time or COVID time? Which 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 one are you <laughs> we talking here? Because then if we're so talking Jonas, COVID time, I've been here for like thirteen years. That would be fair, except for 
we both do it equally. And in fact, prior to COVID, she was in it a little bit more than I was, I would say. So, and like COVID, she's the person, she's like the me on my other week. Because how my stuff works is we're split shift. Half of us are, are in one week and half of us are in the other week. So yeah, I would, I would agree with you, except for she's been in it just as much, if not more than me for most of the time so i have i have no idea i'm very very confused i'm i'm not confused i understand you you have absorbed and retained and learned better than the person who trains you that's that's a thing that happens it happens it's just sometimes how it goes now like jonas i have done that before i have told people stuff and i'm like all right i i can't hang on to this i have too much other shit that i have to remember it's just just gone. I have just removed it. It is out. Um, oh, or at least I've tried. Yeah, I do that, but then I then I keep the emails. Oh yeah, no. I always I always keep I keep the documentation. God damn it! If there's one thing I'm passionate about, it is documentation. Write shit down so that you can find it later if you need it. I like unless it's ab- actually junk. I don't delete emails. I keep anything. I keep anything that that's that that might be remotely useful later. I got, I'm extremely sad about our, our seven-year destruction policy and when that's going to become applicable to me. Yeah, I know. I haven't been there for seven years, so in two years I will have to actually wade through my email and probably write stuff down in a different area and get rid of some stuff. Yeah, I... Dude, uh... or, well, I, or they have an aversion to reading their email. Or, yeah, yeah. It is. It really is. Like, 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 just look. And that's the thing that kills me is like Slack, Teams, Outlook, Gmail, all of these at the very top of all of them. I don't care what else there is around what's happening in these applications. Every single one of them at the very top has a fucking search bar that you can type in what you're looking for. And if I don't remember something, you know what I do? I search for it. That's why I don't have to ask people things. And I think maybe that's part of what it is, is like, I don't know these things, but I know how to get to these things. I know where the, the information is so I can look for it. Um, or I have just enough like understanding of it to where I can go and find the answer and see if this is like legitimate or whatever it may be, you know? I I just I I just have much confuzzlement in general. That happens. I get it. You know, it's 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 a thing. It's absolutely a thing. Um, But two years later, I've gotten over the fact that they started calling me a SME. Like two years into my tenure there, I'm like, how am I a SME when there are people who have been here for 25, 30 years? Elena, I started my job at the the last place. And a year in, I started as a junior developer. I started at the bottom as far as the developers go. A year in, they made me the team lead. Um, A year after that, they made me a manager. And a year after that, I had three teams underneath me. And I still don't fucking know how that happened. I have no fucking clue how that happened. No idea. I don't, though. That's the thing. Like, I know how to find stuff. But, like, I'm not... Wait, 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 wait. Listen to what you just said. I know how to find stuff. That is no that is a stuff that you know. Right, but that's but I'm not using anything that's not avail like I'm not using anything that's available to me that's not available to other people. That's my point. Your brain. Eh, that's Yeah, we've we've had discussions about my brain and it is a festering pile of garbage. <laughs> Clearly not because it keeps getting you promoted. I, listen, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not promoted. Okay, yeah, I have not been. Said. I'm not. I'm not getting promoted. I'm not getting promoted. Yet. Okay, so Jonas. So Jonas put a link in the chat to the XKCD. That is the um, the the flowchart that the tech support flowchart, which is just, it's it's incredibly. This is yeah. But this, this is, I, I used to keep this above my desk. 
I would print. I had a printout of this pinned to the bulletin board above my monitors, and so if anyone would come into my office, and this is when I was working the construction company, the last IT job that I had, when someone would come in and they would have a question about something, I would point at the flowchart, and I'm like, "Did you you see this? Did you try this? Did you try this flowchart? Did you try to do the thing? If you did, okay, fine, I will help you." If you have not tried, leave my office and come back when you have tried. I would tell people this. And I mean, I worked there for like, I don't know, like five and a half years. So, you know, and it's a construction company. So I got really familiar with people. Like I, I everybody knew me. I was the IT guy. Like there was a contractor that worked like 25-ish hours a week. Um, and he had been there for a really long time. But I was the only full-time on-staff IT person. So... Yeah, go go figure the fuck out, because that's how I did it. That's everything that I do. It's basically how I do it. Is I, I fuck around with it until I figure it out. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, whatever. Last week I fucked around with stuff and didn't figure it out until Monday morning. It's fine, it happens. But the point is, you know, I think I th- a lot of it, it, it isn't necessarily have to do with with how much you know, it's just... You know your willingness to to try, and I think a it's lot of much, people. It's how much you can convince other people that you know what you know. Well, yeah, but I keep trying to tell people I don't know anything, so obviously I'm I'm doing pretty bad at that regard. I've been doing the same thing. I always feel like I'm like eight years behind everything. So. Mm, well, mm, yeah. I mean, it is what it is. Like it's. Mm. Listen to me. No one listens. No one listens. Nope. It's fine. It's fine. So, are you gonna actually update your resume? Yes. Or send it to you because I think <gasps> it's about as updated as it gets. That's fair. I can help Ayla. you. Ayla. Ayla's here. Hi, Ayla. Did you know that Ayla started streaming again this week? So, yes, because we rated her. Yes, I know, but you know, there are people here that might not have known that <gasps> Rocky's here too. Oh my god, this is great! Hi, Ayla. Hi, Rocky. Welcome in. Um, we are just kind of bullshitting about work right now, and and oh no, I'm sorry. I that's one thing I'm very thankful that I don't have to deal with is migraines. My mom gets those, and I just, I'm, she's got a lot of different neurological issues, like migraines. Um, I think at one point they thought she had MS, like, just all kinds of stuff. But um, I'm, thankfully, I don't have any of that that I know of. Who knows, it may develop as I get older. I think some of it did to her, but whatever. No one knows, that's half the fun. That's half the fun. (laughs) No one knows, that's half the fun. Uh, well, I hope you feel better very, very quickly, because um, that's I can I can only imagine how how not fun that is. Um, but I am glad that you're streaming again, Ayla. I've I've missed your streams. They're 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 nice and they're they're fun and a and 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 irreverent and also peaceful. It's it's kind of nice. Um. But yeah, we're at this point. I think we're in the we're in the part of group therapy where we're 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 telling Elena that that she's she's you know she can do better than than the place that she's at now just because she and you know it you know it are we wrong are we wrong see this is this is stuff this is and I know. I know this is all stuff that you've heard already, but it all came from Lollipop, and you're like, well, he's biased because he married me, and he loves me, and yada, da 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 It's different when it comes from somebody else, and I know this because Sabrina will try to tell me st- shit all of the time, and I will downplay it because of the, the exact same reasons, even though I know she's right. Don't tell her I said it. She's probably going to chime in and chat in a minute to say that, ha ha, 
I heard you. You're right. You know I'm right. Uh huh. Now you can't tell me I'm not right anymore. I mean, she's not always right, but she's usually right. Don't you, Allie? Don't you do it? Don't do it. Do it, Allie. Don't don't you do, do it. it? Don't you do it? God. I encourage you like you encouraged me, Allie. Do it for the hashtag fish hashtag content. Hashtag fish hashtag I content. I just don't know what that means in this context, but. Actually, it's funny because I came up here and like she'll have the stream on on her phone, but she'll have something else on in the background, and um, she started finding Nemo because you know she's she's been hashtag gonna hashtag tell goddamn shit. Um, she started finding Nemo, so she's she's got her own fish content that she's been she is she was watching downstairs. I just realized something, so I'm I'm wearing the Milkstein shirt. Then I have the milk stein here, but then over here I have the milk stein coffee mug. So I'm like, it's the trifecta of milk stein merch. That's You're steining it up. Boy, I tell you what, if nothing else, I'm always on brand. I will say that. Barely. Um, yeah, barely. I'm gonna. That's gonna become like a fucking swear jar for y'all. Like every time you say barely, I'm gonna make you do something. I don't know, but you have to put. That's s not fair in the sense that we we Th make druid puns all that's, the time. And that's the only fucking bear pun that you can think of at all times. I mean, does it? Can we make bear puns if we agree to continue it so that it's actually druid puns instead of just bear puns? Maybe maybe we can do druid puns. I'm okay with druid puns. You know. I can't believe you just agreed to that. Yeah, well. Why would you treat us this way? Oh God, this is this is what I get. I try to let you, you branch out, me. and and this is what I get. You gotta be <sighs> kitting me right now. <laughs> gotta be kitting you right meow. This is gonna be a real hoot. <laughs> uh, all right, so the Milkstein. Um, so I have a friend of mine, um, who I met. Um, I met him like through a friend of a friend. Okay, uh, Jonas. So, have you ever um, heard Renee talk about her friend Norcross? It's the guy that used to rent her house years ago. Um, so Norcross uh, actually gave me this Stein years and years ago. Okay, so um, my buddy Norcross, uh, Andrew Norcross, uh, he's a web dev. Um, he lives in the area here. Uh, in the Tampa Bay area. Um, I've known him for years now. Um, just fantastic fucking guy. Like, love the guy to death. Um, and years ago, uh, he actually bought me this Stein. And, um, like, he saw it and he's like, you know, like, because everybody else that, like, when people are, are drinking, I'm drinking milk. That's just my thing. That's always been my thing. Like, I go to the bar, I order milk. Okay. That's why I have a robe that says the milkman because I've had literally like multiple bartenders in multiple states call me the milkman. Um, so Norcross found this, this Stein and he bought it for me. Um, he thought I would really like it, which I do. Like, I think it's, it's beautiful. And he's like, I will buy you and he's like, I will give you the Stein on one condition you must only ever drink milk out of it. That's it. You can't drink anything out of this but milk. And I'm like, deal. And so I've had this for like probably 10 years. And like the only thing that's ever been in here is milk and the soapy water to clean it out afterwards. That's it. Um, but like this You is must clean it with milk. <laughs> right? Clean it with milk. Just like... Just with pressurized milk, like like in a spray nozzle. Um, but yeah, so he gave it to me, and he's like, "This is this is for you. You can only drink milk out of it." And so I've I've kept that word all these years. And I mean, uh, you know, oh no, don't make me drink the milk. Oh no, don't make the milkman drink the milk. How terrible! How I've met with a terrible fate. But that's it. Um, so, you know, I've I figured this um, doing like on stream. You know, I love drinking milk, and I'm like, you know, this is a good time for getting an espresso machine just for cleansing the milk stein. Just, <laughs> that's amazing. 
Yes, this has this gets milk and frothed milk. <laughs> which which one is it today? It depends on how dirty it is. Um, but yeah, that's that was that was the condition. So I I drink out of it for I I, I like I brought it up for stream because it's it's pretty decent size. It's about a probably about twenty ounces, and um, so I yeah I I I thought you know this is like our thing, and. So it just became a thing. Like, I love the milk stein. It's my friend. And so I, it was funny, like, when I got the artwork done, um, I sent it to him. I'm like, by the way, I'm like, you remember that milk stein that you bought me years ago? I'm like, not only am I still using it, but I got it immortalized um, by having artwork commissioned of it. And I sent him the milk stein image, and he's like, this is excellent news. Like, so, which for him, that's a huge deal. Like, he, he, he does not get, like, incredibly excited about stuff. He's very low-key. So for like to, to for him to say something like that is like that's big shit. That's that's yeah. Ooh, the little water spout thingies. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Just like or like they have at the bar, just like turn upside down, psh, and have it clean out. Yeah, that's what I need. Although you, know the, you can buy those, right? I know the problem with it is um, like in the bottom around the the lip here at the bottom. Like it, it's it's indented just just enough to where if there's like a little bit left in here, which you know there always will be, just the, the nature of it, um, like it'll sometimes dry in there. So what I usually do is, um, I get done with it, I'll take it downstairs, and I will soak it for like a day in um, like I'll do hot soapy water and let it soak, and that like just really you know eats away at it and cleans it out, and then I'll take the nozzle on the um, the sink. Um, the faucet and go through it because it's got a spray nozzle on it. Um, so I'll just go through and, and spray it out and make sure I get all that out. And like it's all nice and glazed and everything on the inside. So it cleans out really nicely. But yeah, you know, I have a whole routine with the milk stein. I have to take very good care. It was a gift. It would be rude not to take care of a gift. So. Mm -hmm. What? I'm reminded of the meme I sent you in Discord. <laughs> well, it's true. It's tr even even when it's my shitty brain and it's shitty problems. It would be rude not to. It was a gift. <laughs> but Therapy I'm, is like someone gently walking through your brain and looking around, like this. How you living? Therapist, literally. Why do you keep these? They're terrible. Me. They were a gift for my parents. You can't just throw out gifts. Oh my god, rude. Oh, shut shut up shut up. Dad's here. Everybody everybody hide. Everybody hide. Dad's here. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> Cracko talking bad about our parents here, so. <clears throat> right? Cracko, Cracko, he descends from the attic. Oh, what's up, buddy? How you doing? You doing all right tonight? <laughs> oh, did the mu the music stop, didn't it? Yes. It sure did. Okay, I'll fix it. There we go. There we go. Okay, it's back again. Every once in a while, like if the browser tab for the music just doesn't, um, uh, if it doesn't have focus, then the. Are you still listening? Well, like it'll just kind of go to sleep and it won't like progress to the next thing. So I guess that's like a function of YouTube's audio library. Um, but whatever. Are you still there? <laughs> Are you still there? Um, I'm Target good, Cracker. Lost. <laughs> God damn it. Now I want to play Portal. Dude, stream it. I, or like Portal 2 with the co-op. Portal 2, yeah. Yeah, I think I actually have Portal 2. Um, on the... Th I think I had it for the... Th well, I had the orange box... And I think I did get Portal Two. I don't remember. Anyway, I'm I'm all right, Cracko. I'm I'm doing pretty good. We've been we've been complaining about about uh, work stuff mostly, and and telling um, Elena that she deserves a new job because she's she's better than what she's being, you know, given or whatever. I mean, to be fair, my direct soup would, and a couple of the soups, like, one of the soups at one point, like, a month or two ago, like, was like, we're really sorry we don't have any positions, we really want to have one for you. And I'm like, what? It's fine. 
I mean, like they're more worried about it than I was. Yeah, I yeah. Let's see, Portal Two. They got so what recent updates have they? Let's see, recently released multiple updates for Portal Two. I haven't I haven't looked at it in so long. Uh, let me look and see if it's in my library on the Xbox because I'm I'm like ninety percent certain that I own it on the Xbox. Um, and it's a, it, it's been a backwards compatible title forever now. Let's see. Portal 2. So, how are you? Because I'm a potato. <laughs> That's just like the best. Uh Mmm, potato. Potatoes are delicious. Do I not? Do I not actually own it? Oh, it's gotta it's gotta dump me over to Whoa. Oh no 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 no, we're not doing that. Nope, 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 nope. It's true, you did marry a potato. You like like I know that Tom likes to say that he is farts wearing a human suit, but he's really farts and potatoes wearing a human suit. Maybe those farts are made from potatoes. That's entirely possible. Oh, I guess I don't own a digital I might have a disc of it. That might be what it is. Where you live long enough to become the fart. Okay, so um, Kraken, it's funny you you mention that because for Tom's birthday uh, a few weeks ago, I thought about getting him um, one of those potato parcels where you can have like something printed on it and sent. And before I did it, I read the disclaimer that says don't eat the potato because the ink might not be good for you. And I was like, well, what might happen is Tom will get the potato and I will tell him not to eat it because it, of the ink. And I think Tom would not think that is a waste of a perfectly good potato. Tom said that he would probably just eat the potato anyway and risk getting sick, which also is not ideal. But, I mean, you can try it. He just might eat your Skeletor painted potato. Get food safe coloring. Paint it with food coloring. That, yes. Food safe coloring. So do food coloring. And that actually would would work, I think. But yes, that is, that is, can confirm that is your husband. He would eat the potato. <clears throat> I mean, honestly, like, you know, potatoes. Like, Unless you have a health reason not to eat potatoes, you're probably eating potatoes. I had potatoes today. Had waffle. F no, well, I did. No, I did. I had. I had. I had potatoes. Uh, I had a couple of Sabrina's waffle fries at lunch. I got zucchini fries for my side because zucchini. Oh, I love zucchini. I really like zucchini fries. It's true. Whomst among us? Whomst among us? Whomst the fuck? Uh, lead potato. <laughs> just paint it in like 1970s fucking wall paint. Just slather that some bitch down. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, God, a cousin who's allergic to potatoes. Oh, I can't imagine that. My One of my biggest fears is like getting bitten by a tick and getting Lyme disease and then having the like the the effect afterwards of not being able to eat like red meat that would like just nope I'm done I'm done Viking funeral me at that point like set me on a boat and light that some bitch up because I'm done I can't I can't go without my red meat I have to have steak in my life oh no Viking funeral for you. Oh no, not if I if I can't eat steak, we're doing it. I know, like zucchini, you can do you can do all kinds of things with zucchini. They're so good. Like, I mean, squashes in general. Like, there's a there's a lot of great squashes, but like, 
Man, I'm not gonna kill your husband. No, but Kraken might. Krako oh, well, might. that's true, yeah. Well, I don't know, Krako might. Yeah. I All squashes are the same speed. Like, are you eating, like, are you eating a zucchini? Are you eating a pumpkin? Who knows? It just depends. It just all depends. Okay, yeah. But what does it depend on? Um, they're like whatever it depends on. They're like they're like breeds, like dogs, like you know. I like, don't eat dogs, so I wouldn't know. I'll, all I'm saying is, like, they're all the same species, Canis familiaris, but they all but they have different traits because of their breeding. Squashes and then like the broccoli, cauliflower, bok choy are the same way. Like it depends on the breeding. Do you breed dogs for flavor? No, you breed them for traits. Some some people breed them so that they're like very large and muscular. Some of us breed them so that they're they have squishy little faces and snort at us and have all the wrinklies because pugs are cute, goddammit. Yes, but they are so definitely unhealthy. I know, but they're so stinking cute with their squishy faces, they're so squishy. Oh my god. They have like ruined certain breeds. It's because you you essentially live with a pug who also has the breathing problems. I feel I attacked gonna, right now. <laughs> I was going to say, what the fuck? I don't live with a pug. And then, <laughs> and then you continued. But you know, we were actually talking about this at Retro, about how um, there are like smaller dogs, like short, like small dog syndrome is like a thing. And it's almost entirely our fault. Yeah, it is. We have bred that onto them. We as humans basically are ruining, and everyone wants a fancy new breed, but no one wants to do the genetic testing. So, you talking about like small dog syndrome? Like Sabrina's favorite dog breed, Dachshunds. Little fucking weenie dogs. Let me tell you, they 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 know that they are the biggest dogs on the planet. They don't know they're small. They think they are very the large. Oh, white tigers too. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, we did it real bad to the white tigers. Ooh. Wait, pug tigers? No. I think my favorite thing is uh corgi versions of other breeds oh my it's god like the legs but everything else is just a normal dog <laughs> like it's it's like like I, I i saw it described once as like corgi mixes or just look like other breeds or or corgis trying to disguise themselves as other breeds it's very that is very accurate i just really wish that people who did not have active lifestyles or abilities to take their dog out would stop thinking that corgis are super cute for them specifically. Yeah, like, no. Corgis are cute, but they're like a shit ton of work and energy and... Oh, the tigers with the short I... faces. I know what you mean, Jonas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well I like... Day, like... They're, they're if they're down here, they're probably happy regardless. But I hate seeing huskies down here. I know, I really do. I know. Snow dogs. If they're happy down here, they don't they don't know what they're missing. Probably. <laughs> yeah. I feel terrible for them. Oh, the lab corgi mix. Yeah, like you talk about ha talking about people, you know, needing to to be active. Like there was a guy on my team several years ago. And he is like, he was the slowest, like, he would like walk at a snail's pace. Like he was, he was just like lazy and not necessarily like not getting his work done all the time. Although I did have to fire him because he wasn't doing good at his job. Um, but like he, he was just very slow and lazy and physical activity was just not his thing. Not his thing at all. My camera zoomed out. I gotta fix that. That reminds me. 
Um, but he he wanted a pug really bad. And he was going to go get one. And I'm like, listen, dude. I'm like, I don't think you understand. I'm like, I know pugs get lazy. Um, and they, they do like to slouch around sometimes. But fucking pugs are energetic as fuck all. He's like, really? I'm like, yeah. Yeah, dude. They go, they go ape shit. Like, pugs are active as fuck. They run around everywhere. No, the right. They do not start lazy. They absolutely do not start lazy. And they will, they will go, go, go. And I'm like, you better be careful because if you're going to get a pug, you better be prepared to get off your ass because it's going to get you off your ass. They go, 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 but then they also, like, they sound like a car perpetually breaking down the entire time. Yeah. Yeah, well, like Ali says, they, they only... still have the nasal problems. Right. That's like Ali said, like, they only slow down because they can't breathe well enough to keep going. If they could keep breathing, they would keep going. They absolutely my brother, would. My brother used to have two pugs, and that those those two were just all over the place. It was pretty insane. Yeah. Yeah, I had a um, guy that used to be my best friend years ago. Um, he had a pug, um, and his name was Mo. And so, um, we like we would I would come over and like Mo would come into the room and he'd get down. He'd like like my buddy would get down. He go, Mo, Mo, what are you doing? And then like he would like the dog would do the thing like you know how like dogs will like get down in front and, like you know they're yeah. they're about to do the the super play thing and then he would just pew and he would like he would run around the fucking house he would like run down the hallway and run through the bedrooms and he would come back and like like zoom like he would fly up onto the fucking couch the sectional sofa and he would run back down the hallway and just keep going like he would do this for like like 10 minutes like he would just go wild this dog he was great oh my god i do that i will listen and nod too but you can see me so it's different um but yeah man like pugs they're they're so full of energy until they have to stop and breathe and sometimes they're lazy you know sometimes i mean who again <laughs> whomst among us but man yeah I, I told him, I'm like, dude, you you better be prepared because you're going to get, that dog's going to run your ass ragged. You're in for a fucking awakening. <sighs> a lazy Jack Russell. I have never heard of such a thing. Like, all I can think of, like, whenever I think about a Jack Russell, all I can think about is, joop, joop, joop. Joop, if joop. there was a, there was no way in hell that wasn't a purebred Jack Russell or anything like that. Like, holy shit, Jack Russells don't stop. Oh my god, boingy, 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 they boingy. Coming, they don't stop coming. And they don't stop coming. And they don't stop coming. <laughs> oh god, and the yap yap yap. They're such yippy dogs. Oh my god. Ah. Oh. Yeah. It's like people say, it's like. Like if you if you don't have a dog above a certain like size, you don't have a dog. You have a cat. <laughs> I have a firm cat. A firm cat. Yes, that's what you, that's what you have. You have a firm cat. He likes his bone. He got a new rawhide lit yesterday. Oh, he's such a good boy, the Bowser. He's such a good boy. He deserves it. He deserves it. Uh, that not. Now, Jonas, that's not always true, and that's and I tell you this because Siamese, Siamese will constantly yell at you if you get one that's like... Allow me to introduce you to Elliot. Oh, sweet Elliot. He just wants cheese and no doors. That's all he asks for in life is to for the doors to go away and the cheese to keep coming. That's it. And May the doors magically turn into cheese. Oh my god. He does not be picked up because if you don't have cheese, he does not want to be picked up. Listen. Like he, he just murped at me because I picked him up because I was trying to get him to yell, but he decided not, not to. 
Listen. They are adorable, though. Why not? And Elliot, like, 90% Why of the time, not? he has this concerned look on his face, and the other 10% is made up of when you're scratching his chin, when he's sleeping, and when he's looking at you, and, like, knows he's being adorable. I don't know. I don't see as much of the concern anymore. I see more of the 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 cute adorable. He's a loaf. Oh, I love when they're loaves. Okay, but like also speaking of consider this the Kidarino. Exhibit A, the Kidarino. The very goodest kitty boy. I was getting the purpers. Oh, I love when they do the purpers. Oh. Elliot has very loud purpers. Oh, I love when they're loud, the purpers. Oh. Like, his default is loud purpers. Oh. Like, you just come up and it's like, like, it's like a, it's like a tiny little lawnmower just running. Yeah. Like a like, tiny fuzzy little lawnmower. Just walk up and like, like sometime when the pandemic is over, you are gonna have to meet this cat. I'm gonna give him so you. many cuddles and cheeses. <laughs> oh, yes, we will save his cheese allocation for the day for you. Yes, I um, I'll be his new best friend. It's, it's a shame that he is not, he's not a black cat because we cannot make jokes that the void is hungry and wants is loud and it wants chicken. Mm, that's true. That's true. Ah, uh, well, um. We're coming up on time, but um, I think this was pretty good. I enjoyed this. Um, is this something that, that y'all would like to do regularly? Um, and if so, um, is there a specific format that you like? Did you like just coming in, just talking about what's been going on with you? Um, is there a day of the week that works better or is Wednesday good? Um, I mean, what do y'all all think? I like... I like the idea of filling the, um, essentially like the empty space with, with idle chatter of just whatever is bothering us at the time or whatever. And then like, if the, since this was supposed to be like a therapy kind of thing, like if there is therapy questions or anyone wants to talk about anything specific, then yeah, bring it up. But okay. Well, then yeah, yeah. Fuck it. We'll talk about cute cats, how shitty work can be and everything in between. And what? And the year that this pandemic will be over, are we up to 2081 now? Yes. Yeah, uh, like now that. we are. Yes. Pretty sure I mentioned 2080 yesterday, so yeah, 2081 would yeah, be the I next one. Yeah, I think it was. Yeah. So I 20... don't think I will be alive by 2081, so. Yeah. I would be 94, so. I'm I'm I'm, like... I'm made up of preservatives and and um. What am, what was it? What did I what do I always say? Like I'm just <sighs> I'm just preservatives and. Um, calcium. Oh. Yeah, calcium and I mean, preservatives. I mean, my ancestors on each side have lived in their 90s, but uh, some of them not in conditions I would want to live in. Well, you know, I mean, there's I give and take with that, right? I old man. Yeah, that's, that's probably not ideal. No. I have no. the dementias in my family to look forward to. Oof. Thankfully, I don't have that, so I'm I'm very fortunate there. Also, my uh, my maternal grandfather, um, when he died a couple of years ago, he had a full head of this color hair, so I'm gonna have this hair forever, which I'm pretty happy about. And I got a great big bushy beard to go with it. So my brother's not because he's bald. <laughs> <laughs> His uh, son's got more hair than him. Yeah, yeah, that'll happen. Um, Ali, I would absolutely love to have you on voice, or if anybody else would like to join voice, um, I would be, I would be absolutely. Uh, my my maternal grandfather, Jonas, my maternal, so my mom's dad. Um, like uh, basically all of. Uh, most of what you see, I get from my mom, and most of what she has, she got from her dad. So, like, genetically, I basically am, like, a very, I'm a, I'm a much louder, more cantankerous version of my granddad, which is, I never really thought about before, but it's kind of true. 
That's where I get the voice from. Uh, we have this thing when, in the, the family that we like the Williamson. Well, so that that's true. That's true. When anyone says the word cantankerous, I just think of a tankard of beer. And that's just how that works. That's just always how that works. Let's put a lid on it. Cantankerous. Um, all right. So good. All right. Um, but yes, Ali, I would love to have you on. I would love to have any any of y'all that would like to join in voice um, and just chit chat. If you've got something on your mind you want to talk about, um, let me know. We I can get you set up in the Discord so you can join us on voice chat. I would absolutely love to have um, have y'all. Um, join with us and, and just just chit chat about stuff um i'm probably will do this every other week um unless y'all would like to make it a weekly thing um if you would i'm i'm totally down like we can we can do group therapy every week and then like every fourth week or whatever it ends up being um can be like my therapy review show so we can talk about this you know like we did last week uh where i talk about therapy you know that experience and everything like that and just to make it official, let's just go ahead and, and start wrapping it up now. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm I would love for y'all to, to join join me on voice. Um, once again, don't forget that on Friday we don't have a show this week. Um, I will be taking a night off, um, and I will be in a camper. Um, eating hot dogs and steak and eggs and such um just kidarino cheering with a milk stein i mean we could probably make that work um but yeah uh let's 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 well you know we'll, we'll play this by ear um join the discord let me know what y'all would like to do um as far as um you know group therapy if there's topics if there's anything in particular we have a group therapy channel in the discord um let me know your preference on whether you would want to do this every week every other week um and then we can we can kind of go from there um this will but this is this this has been really productive and i'm 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 really enjoying it um i think it's it gives us something a little bit different than just you know constantly playing minecraft which i enjoy but also you know, just a little something different that, that to kind of to break things up a little bit. Um, let's see what else. Oh, don't forget, I'm still trying to get up to 100 followers. So um, tell your friends, follow the channel, because as soon as I hit 100, I'm giving away that three month Xbox Game Pass Ultimate subscription. Okay, so three month card. That's a forty five dollar value. That's going to someone in a raffle that we hold after I hit 100 followers. So, you know, tell people to follow the channel because we do fun stuff and also sometimes good stuff and even good fun stuff. It's it's just all here. We do it all. We do all of the things, fun, good, and good fun. Right? That's what we do, right? Meow. Okay. That, I, meow, in this case, means yes. I translated. That's what I'm, I can do that, you know. Meow, meow. Meow, 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 meow. Um, let's see. Is anybody doing the stream stream Fire still? Fire and Gene is. Ooh, okay. Uh, let's see. Oh, it looks like Gene went offline. Oh, it's still such online for me. Oh, Fire's still on. Fire's still on. Yeah, let's, let's go drop in on Fire. Good old friend Fire. Do, 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 do. All right. Yeah, we're going to go see Firepower. Um, see what kind of stuff he's doing tonight. Oh, he's building... Oh, yeah, he's building a ship, too. So we can all have boats, you know? Everybody gets a boat. Um, but... Um, yep. Like I said, join us in the Discord. Let us know what you want to talk about. And uh, I will see y'all again on Sunday. Yeah? All right. Uh, until then, y'all take care, and I'll see you next time. Bye.